Hello and welcome to this episode of Partner Enabled Industry 4.0 with AWS IoT, where we're going to be discussing industrial IoT and the business benefits to the challenges in adoption and everything we hope in between. Uh, my name is Alex Hilton. It's my pleasure to be the moderator for this session today. I'm the chief executive of the Cloud Industry Forum. Uh, we're a UK based IT trade body uh, focused on the advocacy uh, of, of cloud adoption, uh, albeit with a very much vendor agnostic uh, approach that we take. Um, I'm joined today by three wonderful panelists, um, Sanjay, Supana, and Mukesh. Just everybody give them a wave. All working, the audio is fine, the video is good. Let's, let's proceed. Um, I will ask each of them to introduce themselves in, in, a, in a second, um, and then we're going to hear for a few minutes from Mukesh with some perspectives from IDC as well. But however, in today's episode, we're going to be discussing industrial IoT and really how data and cloud are driving the transformation uh, in the space. And so um, we'll get into Mukesh's keynote in a moment. But meantime, if I can maybe ask Supana, Sanjay, and then Mukesh to introduce themselves in that order and tell us a little bit about yourselves. And we'll go from there. Supana, hi. Perfect. Hi, hi, everybody. Uh, good morning. Good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, to all of you. I'm Suparna Datta, leading the industrial IoT practice in LNT Infotech globally. Uh, I come with a long IT career in multiple multinational companies. And uh, in the industry 4.0 space, uh, I'm leading this practice uh, for last six years approximately uh, in uh, LTI and prior to LTI in Atos. Happy to be with you today. Welcome to all of you. Thank you. Thanks, Ipana. Lovely to uh, have you on this uh, webinar. Uh, hello, Sanjay. How are you? Yeah, thank you, Alex. <clears throat> good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you all over the world. Um, very glad to be on this panel with this uh, distinguished uh, colleagues of mine. I am you know, Sanjay Bajavat. I'm based out of Seattle, and I lead the worldwide IoT business development effort for Amazon Web Services. I've been at Amazon for a little over four years now, and uh, my team is focused on, you know, uh, bringing our latest IoT services, including our industrial IoT services, to market, and then also packaging them into solutions, working with our partners like LTI and others to bring them you know, to our customers um, in the, you know, various industries across OEM, the commercial IoT market, and the industrial. I spend a lot of my time in the industrial IoT market. And you know, we have people on my team who are specializing in <clears throat> different industries within the vertical. Uh, you know, before I, I came to AWS, I was at Microsoft for over 12 years. and was leading our connected car efforts uh, in IoT just before I left. So glad to be on the panel today. Thank you, Sanjay. It's great to uh, have your time on this uh, call as well. I appreciate that. Mukesh, hi. Hi, Alex. How are you? Uh, my name is Mukesh Dialani. I'm an analyst at IDC, which I am assuming a lot of you would be aware as a global IT research company that looks at pretty much every facet of technology and provides you know data and consulting and you know research uh, globally. Uh, we are over about 1,100 analysts you know dispersed globally that touch all of these areas. Hello to you all, and I um, uh, you know look forward to having an interesting conversation on industry 4.0 or industry industrial IoT. Uh, I've been at IDC. I'm based out of Boston. I've been at IDC collectively. It's my second stint for about. A little over 11 years i've been following this market and i think today we we stand at at, at, at a, an era or a, or a cusp of time where industrial iot is really helping you know customers build that resiliency and uh, into their operations that they require everything's coming together whether it's, whether it's service providers or technology firms and so i look for, uh, forward to uh, you know this session um, just, just to give you a quick background, I'm an engineer. That's my you know, power electronics engineer, but I've spent about three decades across the electronics and IT industry in various roles, uh, you know, across the world. Uh, look forward to the session. Superb, thanks, Mukesh. So, um, we, I mean, we really, really genuinely have got the industry heavyweights for IoT on this call. So it's great to have you all here. 
Um, Mikesh, I'm going to hand back to you in a second because I know you're going to do your keynote. I just point out uh, before you do that that any of the attendees, all of you tuned in to this, will receive an exclusive first access copy of the IDC Technology Spotlight Industry 4.0 Transformation, Leveraging Services Partnership for Building a Smart Factory. That's a very long title for a report. Um, so for those of you who are registered and attending, uh, you, the email you registered with, you will get a copy of that. And um, also, you can sign up for a um, smart manufacturing use case assessment by an LTI transformation expert. So that's a great opportunity. So something worth taking advantage of. But Mukesh, I'm going to hand back to you. And I know you have some slides you wanted to talk through. Sure. Can you guys see my slides? I just want to make sure. Can, can the group see the slides? I'm assuming you can. So I'll go forward. If you can't, just let me know. All right. So hello and welcome to this conversation on Industry 4.0 transformation. Uh, in the about eight to 10 minutes that I will you know, talk with you, we will look at numerous factors that determine how manufacturing customers can leverage services and technology partnerships to advance their resiliency and transformation programs. In, in, especially in a post-pandemic world or in, a, you know, in the current pandemic world that we live in today, transformation is important because manufacturing organizations are realizing that they cannot meet their growth goals or stay relevant and competitive in their respective markets by focusing only on cost optimization strategies. And this is true for manufacturers of all sizes, you know, as they are leveraging connectivity and other technologies that include industrial IoT, edge, AR, VR, vision, and digital twin, among others, as, as they kind of embark on building resilient operations. So to start with, let us try and understand the current business context. Now, if, if you look at most manufacturers, they are under a lot of stakeholder pressure to differentiate themselves and evolve by getting their product to market faster. They are also being called upon to integrate their siloed business units, particularly IT and OT, to build resilient operations without disrupting business. They are being, you know, for, uh, you know, um, you know, being asked to, uh, uh, you know, focus on ROI, they are from, you know, especially from all of their investments across IT engineering and operations budgets, they're being called upon to increase investments in technology and methodologies and build stronger relationship with customers who, ex and these customers expects, you know, really secure, hyper-personalized experiences. Uh, and, and finally, they have to scale revenues. And in, in current, in the current context, they do not have the luxury, you got, manufacturers do not have the luxury of time on their hands. Neither do they have the luxury of increased budgets to invest you know, on their own on all of these programs. Uh, and, and on the other hand, the furiously evolving technology landscape uh, across various horizontal and in, you know, functions, including very specific uh, technology areas, uh, coupled with the challenge to find, you know, really high quality talent uh, that is required to kind of, you know, drive various programs poses a dilemma to most of these manufacturers, right? So some questions that can arise in the minds of manufacturers include, you know, I'm seeing so many existing and emerging new technologies, and I'm not sure where should I start or what should I invest in? Talent is expensive to hire and uh, you know uh, and retain. Where do I go looking for them? How do I scale my new technology investments? What are my competitors doing? What are best business practices? And these questions can go on and on. And at the same time, everybody has to ensure that any invest any programs that you embark upon, you first ask what is the business problem. You can't look at it purely or start with a technology problem. You have to understand the business context, you know, as well. So in, in a recent IDC survey, uh, I, you know, customers were asked, uh, you know, what and these, this, these responses I've kind of showcased only for, you know, manufacturing industry responses. And they were asked, what are your top three business priorities today? 
and you can see the answers. The customers said the highest, the, the top three were operational efficiency, employee productivity, and cost savings. And of course, the other important ones followed as well. In, 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 in another, you know, another question that we asked was, so if you did invest in digital in 2020, where did you see the most benefit? And you can see clients and look at the percentage of increase, like right? about 20 or 25% improvement in time to market and approximately, you know, maybe 23% in customer satisfaction and reducing business risk. These are really, really important, uh, you know, aspects that one must keep in mind as they kind of, as, as, as manufacturers think, you know, where should they invest and if they should invest at all. I think it's a, it's, it's a question that really does not need to be asked anymore. So let me try and, you know, let's kind of look at where, you know, just kind of summarize what is it that clients aspire, uh, you know, uh, to do and what against what backdrop, right? As I said, you know, because manufacturers want to transform, they want to build resiliency. That is, they want to be really aware of what's going on at all times in their operations and connected assets and supply chain and any other re relevant function. Uh, they want to increase revenues. They want to in improve customer experience, reduce costs wastage and wastage and increase profits and keep their employees safe whilst they're doing all of this. But what is the backdrop, right? Many manufacturers today have legacy infrastructure. Uh, they are, as I said earlier, they're facing time to market pressure. Internal business units don't collaborate. And there is no closed feedback loop between customers and supply chain and other entities. So if you had to think that what should we be doing, right? One of the things you would say is, I need to, uh, you know, first step back, as I said, think what is your business problem, right? And then what do I need to do? So what is your vision? What strategy do you need to put in place? Do you have the talent? If you, if you do, great. If you don't, what is the source of talent? Can I work with partnerships or are there partners out there who can help me uh, you know, with, with, with scalable talent models. Do I have internal stakeholder buy-in so that I will get the budgets? What is the expected return on investment? What do I do with the siloed operations? I, you know, I, and once I start connecting everything, will, how, what do I need to do to take care of my intellectual property and, you know, ensure that in my entire operations are safe? And what internal change management do I need to focus on? How do I can communicate my new programs to my, uh, you know, team members and different folks who are going to be really involved in, in, in these new programs and what change management is required to, you know, what changes do I need to make to my internal processes as I start working with either, you know, in close collaboration with technology providers and service, and service providers as well. So these are five, I don't need to explain these to you really in, in a lot of detail, but you know, so what are the, you know, these are perhaps the five applications or areas that you can look at. Right? When we talk about monitoring production, once you include industrial IoT sensors uh, in, 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 you know, you start deploying new technology, uh, they can help you monitor everything, right? Uh, from the time you start your manufacturing process till the time the product is created. All of the equipment, the health of the equipment, do you need, if, is, a, is a particular machine going to shut down at some point? Does it give you advance notice well ahead of time so that you can or organize the spare parts? You know, pretty much anything you can think of, of, uh, you know, about in terms of monitoring can be achieved, right? and then managing inventory and optimizing supply chain. So how do you track inventory, monitor global supply chain? A lot of the data that gets created gives you, will give you the insight and will give you the power pretty much in a dashboard, uh, you know, on your tablet as you walk around the shop floor to decide what needs to be done, right? It's not a, a, um, a, a you know, kind of a decision that you take based on your experience 
It's a combination of decisions that you take based on your experience and real data that is presented to you, right? Once you, if you may be, a, uh, you know, as a manufacturer, have operations globally across many different geographies. How do you connect all of these factories so you have a singular view of what's going on everywhere? What's the health? What's the production output? Are there bottlenecks? What and and you know all of that data will put you in a really uh, great position to manage any any kind of detrimental effect that you know can uh, be as an output of of anything going wrong in production and impacting business and worker safety. This is a very important you know topic that is is kind of uh, you know, it's 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 not replacing leveraging technology to replace workers but technology that augments uh, 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 any 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 colleague of yours who's working on the shop floor to keep them safe and and enable them to get their work done better and finally you know even before you start investing when you look at digital twins that is creating a digital uh, you know version of your entire plant you can pretty much whether it's an engine you're working on you know or looking at a smart factory you can pretty much in a virtual scenario see a virtual representation of the health and the performance metrics for for each of these so uh, you know let's just maybe uh, look at what just just some kind of guidance this is not an all encompassing guidance but how do you envision and execute an industry 4.0 strategy i talk about you know i talked about the business defining the business problem and the goal, maybe it's some questions that you can ask yourself include, how do I improve operational? Do I need to improve operational efficiency? Or first, should I be looking at modernizing my legacy infrastructure? I think both go hand in hand. And there could be other questions as well. You know, do I have, you know, we talked about the talent and the infrastructure, what kind of skills I need to look at? What kind of automation do I need to, you know, bring in? Who do I need to work it for? you know, scaling everything that I'm working on right now. Uh, do I, you know, as I said, do I have the budgets and buying from stakeholders? What is the kind of ROI I'm looking at? Is my, uh, are my operations secure? You know, is everything protected? And there is a, the fifth one is, there is a whole host of technologies you could look at. It's industrial IoT, there is edge, there is 5G, there is security, you know, AR, VR, AI machine learning depending on what kind of uh, you know business uh, the manufacturer is involved in uh, should i look at robotics and video or vision right and all of this at the end of the day the output from any of these sensors or activity is the humongous amounts of data that gets generated so you need infrastructure to really uh, you know analyze that data to interpret that data to store that data you know you may not need all of it right away but at some you know so what do you use? You know, what kind of edge investments you make? That is, you know, infrastructure that's required closer to where it gets data gets generated versus sending it to the cloud. And finally, you know, who's going to help you? What kind of ecosystem do you need to build? You know, what kind of I think this is really important, you know, to 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 understand what kind of partners do you want to work with, you know, what skills you're looking for, what is the process to identify and solidify the relationship with these partners. One word of caution, and maybe we'll discuss that. I, I guess somebody will ask that question, is do not, you know, I, I kind of just published a piece on this topic, but do not treat partners as if they're just going to sit there and supply you with talent. If you really want any such relationship with a service provider or technology provider to be successful, then you have to treat them as your extended arms. You know, at the end of the day, if I, for example, walk in, to a combined team, I should not be able to tell who belongs to the manufacturer, which the talent is part of the service provider or the technology provider, right? And set, you know, define goals, set expectations. I would say, I think today, perhaps, you know, I'd say, say start small and scale rapidly. I don't think, you know, if you know what you're getting after, don't even get into pilots. Just, just if you're confident of what you're working on, just go for it. So with that, I'm going to, you know, you know, stop here and hand it off back to, uh, you know, for for the next uh, steps. 
Thank you very much, Mukesh. That's really interesting. I was scribbling down notes as we were going through that, but some really good insights uh, there. So let's now get into some of the questions. I mean, some of the some of the, I think you've given us a real taster and laid the uh, laid the scene out very well there. Um, I guess so. I'm now going to open it up to the rest of the panel, of course, in here. Uh, so I want to really understand and try and put a bit more color on what is industrial and I just sorry, can't get my words out. Industrial IoT and how it differs from standard IoT. And Supana, I'm going to come to you for that first, if I may. So start with firstly, what is industrial IoT in your perspective? Thanks, Alex. Uh, first of all, uh, after Mukesh's keynote, we touched upon all the objectives, purposes, and the outcome of uh, industrial IoT. I would like to put in a very simple uh, words what is industrial IT? the industrial internet of things in my view is basically connecting the siloed factory operation with the external world okay now well iot is predominantly uh, based on connecting devices to cyber world through wireless industrial IT is a holistic approach where you leverage existing investment made by your customers in factory automation things like SCADA, uh, SCADA or MES along with IoT and combine them with digital interventions like uh, cloud, AIML or AirVR and respond to the volatile market condition. That's what is important. Today's customer want to address the volatile market condition. That's the difference in my view. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that, that's that's really good. Thank you that, for the clearing that up. That, much clearer for me. Um, Mukesh, can you describe um, the evolution of industrial IoT and perhaps the cycle we've been on and where we are now? Sure. So, so you know, when if you if you kind of step back, you know, uh, Superna mentioned SCADA systems, or you know, there were other analog sensors that have been, <clears throat> excuse me, present in the infrastructure for in any kind of manufacturing infrastructure for a long time. This is not something that just kind of, uh, you know, uh, sensors, these are not kind of sensors that kind of just showed up, right? Uh, I think there were there are pressure, flow, and different kind of sensors that were, uh, you know, present in any manufacturing scenario or operations that have been around for a while. What industrial IoT did was it, you kind of put in electronics to to kind of manif to, uh, you put in uh, uh, you know electronics versions of these sensors so that they could be connected to the network. So over time, you saw you know smaller modules evolve and then they started getting commercialized. Uh, you know, and then you saw that they were getting connected to different platforms, uh, and then as they kind of started, as I said earlier, they started generating a lot of data then you you know you had to figure out what to do with that data how you know you it you know you, it, it's kind of you know it's it's the perfect storm you, or the perfect scenario where different technologies have come together and matured that's kind of led to the benefits you're seeing from industrial iot right you needed cloud infrastructure to evolve in a big way you needed that network speed to uh, you know show up right and and so it it's kind of moved from something that was analog to something that's really high speed electronic always connected infrastructure and it took some time there were some you know i would say there are examples in the industry where some kind of took the plunge faster and you know and are seeing the rewards today because they didn't really get impacted as much uh, they did but in a relative sense not as much uh, impact because of covid so you know, it's it. You're and and as we go forward, we are seeing industrial IoT now expand into areas like additive manufacturing. You know, when you talk about AI and machine learning, uh, how does how do systems self heal or self correct, or you know, all of that? It's it's kind of evolving. Where if I can use the term, we use that a lot in our research, and we say you've kind of uh, reached a stage where you're always in a sense and response mode. So you're always sensing what's going on and you're, you pretty much have 
a mechanism to respond to those incidents in real time. So mm. that's that would be my input. Yeah. Okay. I like if I might uh, add a little, you know, addition to what to Mukesh said. You know, uh, just picking up on what Mukesh was saying about the evolution of the cloud. One very important catalyst, I believe, for industrial IoT has been the fact that you know, as the, there has been a tremendous amount of usage of IoT in the cloud, the infrastructure costs of providing IoT services have been dropping. And you know, on top of that, you know, companies like ours, AWS, and others have developed new ways because there's so much data coming up, right? So you are able to build you know, you know layers of data storage. So there is hot storage. And then there is, you know, cold storage. Then there's glacial storage. So as to, you know, give people more and more you know, ability to sort of control the costs of data, which is make that possible. And then, of course, all the AI ML services that have, have come in, which now allow you to bring insights from the data, <clears throat> you know, including sort of new new AI services that we recently launched uh, directly, um, you know, that, that applies to industrial data. So, yeah, that, that evolution, I think, has also been been uh, great to see yeah thank, thank thanks Sanjay that certainly helps um, so, so uh, my next question really is, is what does it mean to have a holistic approach to smart manufacturing and, and how can industrial IOT be leveraged for smart manufacturing um, maybe Supana if I can come to you on that one first and I'll probably go to Mukesh you're all welcome to comment on that but Supana first Definitely. See, smart manufacturing allows manufacturers to harness the power of data, as uh, uh, Mukesh as well as Sanjay was mentioning. The harness the power of data and enhance overall uh, manufacturing efficiency. Effectively, that's what is most important. Now, we have to see that for whom this is happening. The, the personas. Personas are today at the center stage for driving this manufacturing efficiency. Now, when I say that personas are important, what does it mean for us, service integrators or partners? Uh, it means that we have to provide right data in the right format at the right time to right personal. Now, IoT cloud platforms like AWS uh, makes this sensor to insight, that journey, very easy. And it happens because of all the host of data uh, collection, uh, consolidation, uh, services available in many other uh, cloud services available. There are a lot of AI, ML, and uh, uh, such cloud services which makes the insight possible. Now, if you see that a retrofitted sensor data on a machine, okay, uh, and the SCADA data both combined together in a shop floor, that if we analyze it, it can provide us insight to uh, for early detection of uh, say failures. Now, how do we do this? By leveraging the predictive analytics. Okay, that's where the cloud comes in. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, I have to also say that when when manufacturing efficiency is important, another important factor is the, at what cost this is coming. Correct. Client expects us that how a partner can leverage the existing investment of theirs, which is already done on SCADA and MES and whole host of manufacturing application by building ITOT convergent use cases and also the modernization of the plant, plant assets. Yeah. Now that happens with the retrofitting of the sensors in the legacy manufacturing uh, machines. Now, on top of all of this, a suite of uh, plug and play kind of accelerators, IIT accelerators, if we put, that can simply make our IoT adoption uh, very fast and it can accelerate the time to market also transforming the entire value chain end to end chain i mean that's how i see it as a holistic point of view yeah really interesting mukesh did you want to add to that 
Uh, yeah, I, I think this is, you know, maybe I'll kind of go to a few earlier steps and kind of when I, when I look at what a client might find themselves in as they embark on some of these programs, what was, you know, I've come across many use cases or actual case studies where clients were wondering, should I, or, you know, one of the things they talk about as they work with these partners, such as LTI will be, you know, what do you recommend? Should I rip and replace my infrastructure? I have, you know, as, as uh, Suparna alluded to, I have these SCADA systems. Should I rip and replace? Which means there could be business disruption uh, because, you know, is, is that even possible? And the second question they have, other question they have is, can I integrate new technologies along with what I have, um, uh, you know, to, to make sure that I modernize without any business disruption. I would say most scenarios fall into the second category unless you're building brand new infrastructure, in which case the first approach would be, you know, would be fine. At, at the next level, I would say once you go on next layer, you would question, you know, should I just install sensors? I would say you need to look at IoT, edge, uh, you know, and, and communication, whatever network technology you're going to use. There is a lot of conversation about 5G, but is it really required in all scenarios? I don't think so. But if it's required, I think partners have the ability, service providers have the ability to deliver that. Keeping in mind, you know, security, data, which is slash, you know, data and cloud go hand in hand and AI machine learning considerations. So rather than looking at it in an, you know, some of these in isolated forms, you, you should, you know, you know, look at a complete holistic, uh, you know, a, approach, I would say. That's, that's what, uh, you know, I would, I would kind of talk. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, I, 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 one more question. I just want to aim at Supana and then Sanjay. I promise I'm going to come to you with some some thoughts as well, particularly around AWS. Um, Sanjay, um, sorry, Supana. Um, how are data and cloud um, driving transformation in the industrial IoT space? Do you think? Definitely, cloud's role is becoming very crucial uh, for, especially the data consolidation in a situation you know, where PLC, SCADA, IoT sensors on the shop floor, they're generating a tsunami of data, but in silos. Now, this needs to be aggregated, analyzed to provide a meaningful insight to the, to the person or to the user. Now, that is definitely one aspect. Secondly, if you look at cloud matters most when you are looking for scale. From one manufacturing plant to multiple plants, and uh, from there to the enterprise level. So to connect your point of sale back to your manufacturing plant so that your demand and supply are in sync. That's very important part for cloud to give you that scale. Our, uh, in LTI, the four hour uh, strategy, which I talked about the right data, right time, right uh, format and to the right user, that combines the best of edge and cloud technologies because uh, that I need while edge level processing enables me the instant operational decision making, cloud-based solution I would be using when I need to process big data for strategic or uh, tactical purposes to make those kind of decisions. So cloud and data both are immensely important in my view uh, for industrial IT uh, and uh, making the manufacturing plant smart. Yeah, well, I mean, they're kind of symbiotic, aren't they? I mean, they, they, one really can't exist without the other, essentially, I guess is how I would view it. But um, Sanjay, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I've uh, I've been slow to come to you on a couple of these points. Oh, but I'm, I'm really keen to understand um, what the AWS, uh, specifically the AWS IoT ecosystem is uh, and what does it offer, particularly in the smart, smart manufacturing space. So Sanjay, over to you. Yeah, good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good, good question, Alex. Um, so you know, let me answer this in you know two ways. I'll you know share a you know, sort of overall thoughts about how we approach uh, 
industrial IoT with our AWS IoT ecosystem. And then I'll tell a story. I tell a story. I, I like to tell stories about you know our customers and you know, actual problems that we solve for them. So I'll, I'll, I'll walk the the panel you know through a story here. So in terms of the overall point of view, AWS and its network of industrial IoT partners provides end-to-end -end solutions from the edge to the cloud, to analytics, to the business outcomes desired by our customers who are pursuing their digital transformation industry 4.0 projects. Right? Business outcomes can range from predictive quality and maintenance analytics, asset condition monitoring, process optimization, optimization of the machinery and equipment across many plants, early detection and identification, and sort of elimination of process and production bottlenecks or you know, failures or gaps in production processes. Right? All of these leverage our AWS IoT Edge services, our cloud services, our IoT analytic services, plus our AI ML services for industrial. In fact, you, know, uh, you may know that we launched a set of uh, dedicated AI services for industrial. Look out for equipment, look out for metrics, look out for vision, a panorama, which is, which is sort of quality management at the edge. These were all launched at the end of last year. And plus all our data lake services with hot and cold data stores and glacier stores. There is a, there is a wide panoply of services and our partners. So working along you know, with important partners like LTI, you know, we are focused on making it easy to deploy a complete end-to-end -end solution for our customers. So let me walk you through a case study to illustrate how we brought this to life. Recently, we worked with a global manufacturer of outdoor machinery who is experiencing several million dollars of annual warranty costs due to the paint. I mean, you wouldn't think about it, but it's the paint, the paint that was peeling off these machines. And having machines with their brand name out in the open with peeling paint was a major reputational hazard for them as well. Their analysis had suggested the problem was in their paint pretreatment process and they wanted our help to resolve this problem urgently. To begin with, the paint pre-treatment line had no digital sensors at all. You know, a traditional O-line manufacturing company. So we brought in a system integrator partner who first installed and locked the digital converters for pressure, temperature, and viscosity sensor outputs from the pre-treatment tanks. The, the chemists had told us that the that the problem was likely to do with the way these three different metrics were actually interacting. The system integrator then used AWS's industrial machine connectivity kit, which uses several AWS IoT services at the edge in a gateway connected to the PLCs that control the pumps, which manage the pretreatment tanks. And this included a protocol converter from another AWS partner which converted their Modbus output to OPC UA. And then in turn, the OPC UA output, we could consume that directly into our AWS IIoT cloud and present it on an AWS dashboard. Now for the first time, trend lines for the data could be visualized by the customer in, you know, in near real time. The data was then automatically pushed to an AWS hot storage service, where it was combined with their historical pretreatment failure data that the customer had already provided us. Then using our AI ML services that I mentioned earlier, we developed a ML model to predict a potential pretreatment failure ahead of a part coming into a pretreatment tank based on the recent behavior of the three input sensors. And we recommended, the, the model would recommend set point changes. This model was then, the model then was sent an alert to the paint pretreatment team of impending trouble and once they okayed the adjustment, the model output was then automatically used to adjust the set points for temperature, pressure, and viscosity under the watchful eye of the team. And they could watch the alarm disappear as the process self-corrected. So this was smart manufacturing at its best on one line. This is now being rolled out to all the operations around the globe. So customer knowledge plus AWS IIoT services plus an AWS partner system integration expertise that led to the desired business outcome for our customers. So this is a, a, an example of kind of how we, we go about the process. I, I love I love that example, Sanjay. That's great. Thank you for that. I mean, how effective was that? Have they measured any kind of ROI around that one? It's difficult to measure brand reputation as an ROI, but how, how, any feedback from that? 
Yeah, I, I mean, you know, clearly, uh, you know, in the U.S. market where they, they're rolling it out, they they have begun to see that the 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 paint that's going out now is definitely meeting the requirements. You, you know, they've actually improved even their post-paint ex- inspection processes, and that's now they're saying, yeah, the the pre-treatment work is now actually impact. Now the, the warranties, you know, the warranty costs don't don't drop until the paint stops spilling. So, so that take a couple of years. But at the moment, uh, they are very pleased with the outcome of this particular, you know, uh, solution that we had developed with our partner. Yeah, no, no, it's nice, good story. Thank you for that. It's really, it kind of illuminates the whole story, doesn't it? When you when you have yeah. some real life scenarios yeah. like that, so that's that's really helpful. I'm I'm sure Mukesh and Sivan, I know, have some stories they want to tell as well a little bit as we go through. It's just just sticking with you for a minute, Sanjay. Um, yeah. How, how does AWS um, industrial IoT services help optimize? The performance and indeed the productivity of industrial processes. Do you think? Yeah. So this 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 last example, in a way, was an illustration yeah. of, of that. But yeah, I mean, you know, leading industrial companies, uh, you know, fuel their digital transformation with AWS from accelerating <clears throat> a design of their their product, optimizing operation, reinventing supply chain. You know, we lead our industrial customers through the entire transformation process, right? And you know, this this utilizes all the services I talked about earlier: AI, ML, robotics, your know, analytics, the compute services, and the storage. So, you know, I, I love to, like I said, I love to tell stories. So, I'll tell you another one, uh, which which will, um, you know, so illustrate this as to how we help a, a customer solve a particular productivity problem that they were having. This is in the oil and gas industry, where I spent a lot of time myself. We were working with a major gas pipeline operator who wanted to automate uh, the challenging and time-consuming task of reporting to regulators the emissions data from massive turbines and pumps at thousands of compression stations along the length of their, you know, sort of a two or three thousand mile pipeline. All of this data was being collected manually and locally at each compression station with no aggregate view across the pipeline. This customer's OT equipment was a bit more advanced than the last customer. They only had digital tags being generated locally. So we used the same industrial machine connectivity kit uh, with different protocol converters because you know, they had different protocols compared to the, the manufacturing customer. And, and, and used that to bring the data in OPC UA format up to, you know, from, the, from multiple compression stations up to the cloud to demonstrate to demonstrate that it was actually working, we took it running from five compression stations to demonstrate that we could do it at an aggregate level as well. So we displayed this data, mapped it to each compression station in an asset hierarchy, so they could see, you know, four or five compression stations exactly what the emissions controls were happening at each one of those. And then we automated 25 regulatory reports that the customer had provided to their regulators. Uh, in aggregate across all the compression stations that we had connected to. They have now rolled this out to, I think, over 2,000 compression stations around their, their digital plants. And the productivity you know, improvement in doing all this regulatory reporting, which is, you know, this, this, this pipeline was up in the Arctic Circle. And so the amount of you know, the work to go out to the site, pull out the data, all of that was you know, kind of high risk work. And so they are, you know, they're very pleased with the outcomes. I could go on about these case studies uh, of customers who have used IoT services, you know, uh, from AWS and our partners to improve their processes. I mean, we, we worked across manufacturing, oil and gas, power and utilities, uh, you name it, you know, process industries, chemicals, fertilizers, uh, you know, these same issues apply to every industry and every customer in that industry out there. Yeah, yeah. Sanjay, right. this is, sorry, I have a question yeah. for Sanjay. So when when you you know finished this deployment and reached a mature stage, did you like hand off everything to the client, or do you and the partner run that on behalf of the client of the client? Now? Yeah, uh, uh, very good question, Makesh. You know, it depends, right, on the customer, and we tend to classify our customers. I mean, it, it's not black and white like this, but there is the DNA of the customer is either they're a build customer or they're a buy customer. If they're a build customer, then generally we will train, they'll have a DevOps team, and we'll train the DevOps people to basically pick it up. 
they may have a DevOps team and they may also have bring in a long term, you know, like a GSI partner to help sort of manage it, right? So, you know, our, you know customers who have built these services themselves, they are built these solutions themselves, working with us will then either have a, will have a combination of pure DevOps on their side or a combination of DevOps and a, a GSI for long term support. Or you've got buy customers. And in the buy customers, they, you know, uh, they will want to get a pre uh, you know, prepackaged application for, that actually has the application. You know, in this case, let's say it was regulatory uh, reporting. So they'd want to partner an ISV with a regulatory reporting package with integration into AWS IoT services. And then that partner would basically be the one that, that manages everything for them. So that'd oh. be a buy customer. Just oh. bring me a complete regulatory reporting solution from my compression stations. So right. it depends on the customers, uh, just just the way they they want to approach their business. Yeah, that, that, I mean that that's great. Thank you for that, Sanjay. That's a good, really good question, Mukesh, because actually it leads on to the next point. I, mean, I know Sapana looks like she's itching to speak around this as no, well. No, I I wanted to add something on uh, okay. this only. Uh, see, we were talking about uh, production uh, performance improvement during the industrial processes, but you know after sales after the product is sold, uh, say an industrial product, uh, when it goes to market, the service industry can also be completely uh, redefined by this. I mean, we I can give you one example where uh, one of our industrial uh, product customer, they have multi-million installation of their product across the globe. Now, what we have done is using the uh, cloud platform, we have hosted all the digital data about all their installation, all their uh, individual instances. And that's how uh, their service uh, is completely changed. Uh, all the service engineers now have uh, full data about uh, the, the product. Uh, they know all the fault, failures, the history. It's a complete digital replica of their uh, individual instances which is there on the portal available to them now this has saved customer huge huge amount of money uh, and uh, so it's not only industrial uh, production process but also after sales we can use these uh, cloud platforms to enhance our services that's what i just wanted to add to complete the journey yeah, no, that's absolutely fine. And thanks for that, Supana. Um, you know, I'm conscious also, you know, Mikesh, you made, I even wrote it down. Uh, you made the, the statement earlier, I think, treat partners as an extended arm of your business, which I think is really important in here. And, and I think, you know, both the points that Sanjay and Supana have made are relevant to that. But Supana, I want to come back to you, if I can, just quickly, uh, to give us a perspective mm -hmm. on, uh, you know, a service partner like LTI. Um, you know, how, how can, you know, businesses engage and work with you and the kind of offerings you can take to customers? Okay, I will say uh, improving the four P's, persona, process, plant efficiency, along with price optimization. So all of these four have always been at core of LTI's smart manufacturing solution and uh, offerings. Now, first step towards driving a continuous improvement in production efficiency it needs to have a single source of truth and cloud plays a very vital role to give us this true data correct in fact uh, cloud has helped uh, many business enterprises like us to redefine their business model itself and we can overcome our competition by having all the data in one place and uh, you know taking a lot of predictions on that now in lti we are uh, we are leveraging a lot of aws services to build our solutions and offering uh, and uh, take us uh, take our customers in a digital transformation journey now these are three types of services we are using one is industrial solutions now uh, uh, solutions which solves a particular specific industry segment problem. For example, AWS, 
refinery monitoring and surveillance service which is rma service now this service is specific to oil and gas industry so we are using this for our oil and gas customer second type is the accelerators now a lot of common denominators which works on multi industry and uh, these are solutions which can accelerate the journey of the customer we have created them now these are pre built configurable solution template you can see okay uh, they are using a lot of latest aws services which sanjay was mentioning like aws iot site wise we have used it for condition based monitoring or talk monitoring uh, then uh, look out for vision we have used it for quality inspection for uh, one of our uh, customer uh, for the for the automobile manufacturing uh, uh, then again uh, look out for equipment for health monitoring aws uh, panorama for our worker safety solutions all of these aws services we are using to create such kind of uh, pre built uh, solution template and the third one third one is the transformation services for example migration of manufacturing application or uh, ot data consolidation which can support this journey of the customer now here we have used uh, services like aws time stream quicksight or aws athena sage maker all of these combined together a lot of such transformation services so three aspect uh, uh, industry solution accelerators and transformation services that's how we have presented to the customer super thank you Supana. um what, one of the things that we look at within my business cloud industry forum is you know we we, we conduct research on a fairly small scale based in the uk and, and one of the things we always look at is what the barriers have been to cloud adoption particularly in our marketplace um and indeed i know you know and actually the thing the thing that comes up as the main barrier every time for 12 years we've been running this research the number one has been security um so mikesh i'd like to come to you on this one is what are the main um barriers to adoption of industrial iot is security up there i'm assuming it is somewhere uh because right. there are all kinds of perceptions around it could you just touch on that quickly for us right so what one of the you know classic or you know off mentioned barriers is the whole uh you know issue between it and ot and then one thing i want to say to this audience today is that there is no option but for engineering different engineering teams to work with it and if you want to realize the two true potential then you guys have to collaborate internally and i'm seeing you know in in different use cases uh that when it and ot collaborate you see a lot more better uh, outcomes really tra really transformative outcomes and there is no way ot can work without it so rather than focusing on one or the other work focus on both the second is that you know there could be concerns related to security and you talked about it i think service providers and technology providers have enough mechanisms in place that will enable you to you know be you know uh, you know have that peace of mind as you embark on these programs the third would be organizational chain management again you know this comes up as in all our research across the board as you know, one of the top three or four concerns and once again i'll tell you is that service providers have enough processes and methodologies and experience in the manufacturing industry in place to support you with you know any chain management uh, considerations and finally i would say is that you know when you think about i kind of talked about this earlier when you think about roi it, it you know it's don't look at it more as a financial construct it has to be looked at other attributes which is you know your branding that we talked about your your business performance even your overall internal uh, you know how you how you kind of get everything together so i would say these are the the four that could be listed as the top barriers okay okay thank you um I'm going to come to our last question now, and I'm going to kind of combine it in, really, because I'd, I'd like to get each of you um, in in turn um, to think about what are, or to, to voice, if you can, what are the top components of an efficient industrial IoT strategy. But actually, what I want to combine in there is kind of your key takeaway. So if you're thinking about, you know, what, what, what are the things that really need, people should be thinking about here? Maybe organizations who are, you know, just 
dancing around the edges of industrial IoT a little bit in, in that manufacturing space, for example, uh, what are the things that you would suggest people go away and do now? Um, Supana, maybe if you want to go first, uh, then Sanjay, then Makesh. Sure. Uh, see, the top components, uh, I would say three things in my view, my point of view. Uh, first of all, as I said earlier, the pre-configured industry-focused solutions, accelerators, and implementation framework so that uh, implementation can go smoothly is the first thing. Secondly, industry expert pods, the small teams uh, who have a mindset of sensor to outcome, who understands this entire process and they can deploy projects at a lightning speed because speed is utmost important. Uh, Mukesh also uh, mentioned in his keynote. Now, because our customer wants to realize a quick ROI. That's the second thing. And the third one, I would say very importantly, strong partner ecosystem and also have a geo-specific uh, partner strategy. Now, geo-specific, industry-specific partner strategy and the ecosystem. That's These are the three components, I would say. And from my point of view, uh, a takeaway would be, if I, if I say like this, sketch the big picture. Then slice it into small pieces, shape into logical framework, and then scale up. That four steps you can follow to take the journey of smart IoT. Yeah, sound advice. Breaking it down. Thanks, Sipana. Um, Sanjay, love to get your your thoughts and also your key takeaways. Then. Yeah, so I've got my my four as well, I guess. Uh, um, so, uh, for, you know, the, the, the customers and this is you know, the customers I've seen do the best as they enter into the industrial IoT journey, you know, sort of have these four, four characteristics. One is they have CXO level support to pursue the industry for a strategy and preferably from the CEO. I've seen this repeatedly that if you, if you have that support from the top, you know, it's a high in the organization. It, it makes a huge difference. It provides the, the lubricant to make the entire process work because you'll you know, go through lots of ups and downs along the way. Then you, you uh, customers who have done well, have a well-defined business outcome, you know, in mind. They're not trying to boil the ocean. They pick an outcome, for example, 25% reduction in machine downtime on these, you know, four or five lines. You know, let me let me make that happen, right? So they, they take a very uh, clear, uh, well well demarcated project and a defined outcome. Then, you know, customers who have done well are pretty clear. And this goes back to the earlier point I made about are they a buy customer or a build customer? Because if they're a build customer, they need to have the internal talent, a DevOps team to be able to manage these things in the long term. So they've already thought about that. Or if they are buy a customer, then they've built high trust relationships with an IoT platform provider and their ISV and their SI partner. So, so depending on who you are uh, or your DNA and your understanding of it, you have organized yourself a certain way. And then I have found the most success coming in from people who have done a proof of value to demonstrate ROI of the solution. Because customers who have the ROI proof of value is done are able to quickly get more stronger support internally within their companies, gain alignment from lots of stakeholders, get funding, and to be able to scale quickly. So those those are sort of my my four takeaways. Beautiful. Thank you, Sanjay. And Mukesh? Um, yeah, I think, you know, uh, between Sanjay and Superna, you took away all my analyst comments. <laughs> but, you know, there's a role here for you if you ever decide to become. <laughs> anyway, now I'll just summarize. I think I think everything's been covered really well. One of the things that I, I, you know, I will say for me that is really important for clients. If one takeaway that you want to really, you know, that one key takeaway based on in, in combination with what Sanjay and Superna just highlighted is that, you know, do not, you know, try to do everything on your own. It's just very, very clear. If you if you are already, you know, working on a program. Find a partner, find a technology partner, a services partner, and a technology uh, partner. You know, think about build. You know, that ecosystem approach. Come to the table 
and work towards all the objectives and in the approach objectives that Sanjay outlined and that Superna described, right? The approach and the process, uh, you know, what, what are considerations that you would look at? Believe me, I'm not, I've rarely seen, or actually I've never seen a single scenario where such an approach did not yield the benefits in the time frame that customers were looking for. So I'll, I'll leave you with, with, with that. And, you know, you may start with the pilot, do not, one of the other, maybe this last thing I'll say is do not get stuck in that pilot purgatory. Yeah, I've seen that happen more often than not that, you know, you keep doing this pilot and you never scale and it does not yield the benefits that you're looking for. So with that, I'll hand it back to you, Alex. And yeah, superb. Uh, li listen, a huge thanks to all three of you. I think we could have talked for another hour. So I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, and I, I really, really genuinely enjoyed the conversation on what is a, a fascinating uh, topic. Um, so, so thank you for that. Um, you know, as the panelists here, great insights, great expertise, clearly you've got in your subject matter. Um, I, I know you're all on uh, on LinkedIn, and I'm sure the audience will all pick up with you and uh, hopefully follow up uh, from there. For our audience, please don't forget to register for the next episode in this series, and you should be able to find that link at the bottom in an attachment uh, in, in this section. So all that leads me to say, again, thank you very much, and I hope to see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you, much, Alex. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.